Thanks for staying with us. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa right now. Uh, like I promised, we are being joined by Professor Chris Wokobia, uh, Jr., the convener of Country Fest. Uh, we were supposed to have him a lot earlier than now, but um, uh, due to some uh, unforeseen circumstances, we're bringing him up now. But the headlines will never grow old because there are things that we're still concerned about, and he's here to talk with us on some of these headlines as well. Good morning and welcome to the program, Professor. Good morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be on with you. We sincerely apologize for the little yeah. confusion we had earlier on. I was wondering whether it was a glitch or the hitch, um, a la INAC. <laughs> Okay, uh, so let's start with uh, uh, a worrisome thing, but which is also on a lighter note, if you ask me. Uh, one of your neighbors, I'm talking about a, a, a resident of Abuja, who happened to be a former governor of uh, Kogi State, was whisked away yesterday when he was supposed to be arrested by the EFCC. I'm talking about uh, Kogi State ex-governor. So police, that's on the Punch newspaper, policemen, Kogi governor foil, EFCC attempt to arrest Yahya Bello. I, I'd like to hear your comments on that. Yeah, I listened to the, your other guest um, try to address the issues. And then I, I think that there are a few things that the EFCC must change with respect to their programmatic um, um, Maybe uh, in the course of what happened yesterday, they finally thought about it, which is uh, go get a warrant of arrest if they want to take him out or take him to custody. You know, the point is that what happened yesterday was very messy, was untoward. And I think that um, like nobody is above the law, uh, nobody should be abrasive, nobody should be... Um, should handle the law without some decorum and sense of decency. Um, to block the whole street, uh, you have neighbors, you have people who would otherwise go to work or people who are coming back from work. Uh, I think that the whole thing was, um, the shenanigans was wrong. Uh, I do sincerely believe that um, proper invitation should be uh, sent to the former governor of Cookie State and the warrant of arrest that they have gotten should be uh, executed with all sense of decency and decorum. That's the way to go. Um, the tendency of the EFCC for dramaturgy, for less of proper conduct in execution of their, their jobs is lampoonable. I think also that what is important is that the former governor of Kogi State should, uh, um, once invited, go on an invitation and answer to the cases before put before him. All right, so, well, saying in politics, there's a small headline at the bottom that says, APC drags Kanu judge before NJC over Gandhi's suspension. And now we know all that has been happening in the APC. In fact, there's the PDP one, and there's the APC, there's Labour Party. There's a lot of rockers happening in all of these political parties, and these are supposed to be people who are to lead Nigeria forward. And we don't know why that's happening. But I want to get your take on this one, the fact that APC drags Kanu Judge before NJC over Gandhi J's suspension. Let me say very importantly, because uh, that's in line with your question, that when a people become largely uncomfortable with the nuances of leadership, they begin to ask questions. And like an earthworm in the soil, it begins to burrow, it begins to make shifts. You know, that's why there's conflict and crisis, if you like, in the APC presently. There is conflict and crisis, if you like, in the PDP. And we're trying to resolve the conflict and the crisis in the Labour Party. It's natural. Uh, people are asking for an era of responsible and responsive leadership. People are getting uncomfortable and impatient with failure in leadership. People are asking for due process and decency in the public space. And then with respect to uh, the actions due to uh, taking up the, the judge with the NJC, 
there is nothing wrong with asking that any judge that you suspect has done something untoward should be investigated. I think it is the right thing to do. If you suspect that uh, at some point maybe money have changed hands, maybe someone has done something untoward, you, you can petition and ask that the right thing be done. Okay, so moving over to The Guardian, The Guardian leads with poor funding model, poor city stall, $3.2 billion Eastern Rail project three years after. Now, the project was flagged off in March 2021 for delivery in 2023. It is to be funded by 85% foreign loan, 15% federal government counterpart contribution, and a $3.2 billion project has been stalled by funding. Now, what do you think of this? There's even um, the removal of old tracks without a definite plan for their replacement, and that, um, that worries the residents. What do you think about all of this? The fact that we say, yes, we want to you know, create or build this infrastructure, but then you see years come by and it's not being done. Now, we also have the um, coastal highway that is to happen this year, and hopefully it will be delivered in the next eight years. So if we're seeing a rail project not even being delivered in the three years, this is another, an extra year. What happens to that project as well, or what happens to all of the projects that we're saying we want to have in Nigeria, and we just don't know? There's no definite plan on how it to be executed and the time for delivery as well. Ruma, I feel your concern. And let me say that until something proactive, until something effective, until something efficient and effectual is done with respect to our contracting protocol, uh, something... Uh, um, like what you've explained, will continue. I I pray and wish that leadership will understand that congruent with the realities of an ever-increasing, ever-improving world is the fact that people do not just fund projects like uh, we're doing here. Um, there is corruption. There is last any tied to our contracting protocol. And I'm saying this very seriously. In the new world, People enter into joint venture partnerships with established companies that can fund these. And then they build them, operate, and hand over to government after some years. That's what happens all over the world. So when people begin to tell you about funding, uh, the art of funding, uh, low funding, you know that some people have signed up papers, collected 30%, 40%. You know, uh, Nzogu talked about 10% in 1966. Now it's 100% us. Nobody cares about our country. Nobody cares about uh, infrastructural development. Nobody cares about due process. Nobody cares about decency. I, I think that going forward, we must tell government and leadership to effectively deploy and employ what happens all over the world. If you want to build a rail in Nigeria, for instance, and you have money and you bid for the contract, bring in the funds, build the rail, run it for 10, 15, 20 years, depending on the agreement, and then hand it over to government. People will pay, uh, as they pay the toll, as they pay for their tickets, the, the contractor gets part of his payment. And over a period of 10, 15, 20 years, he gets fully paid and hands over the project. So I think that the problem with our country, look at the second Niger Bridge. It took almost 15 years. Mm. What are we talking about? Look at the Lagos Ibadan Express Road. It's taken almost 20 years. Now that we're, they're talking about the East-West Road and several other coastal roads, you know that until the contracting protocol until the order of uh, investments in contracts and infrastructure has changed, until there is decency, transparency, and due process in all of this, uh, we'll continue to have stories like, oh, there, there's a the art of funding, oh, we can't continue to fund. The Second Niger Bridge was funded about three, four times. The blue rail in Lagos several times. The red rail in Lagos several times. The Baron uh, Lagos Express Road several times. And those who have been uh, involved and engaged in the lessening, nobody has been called to order. You know, I, I think that the time has come for us to begin to insist in the minimums, due process, decency, and transparency in the contracting and contractual protocols involving governments and the private sector. Okay, um, as we wind down, uh, let, let's just take this one. I'm concerned about uh, what really is the place of the third tier of government, which is uh, the local government. 
where states can decide what to do to the local government, give them the money they think they deserve and keep the rest. And then now we hear the story on Daily Trust. It is that local government chairman, councillors, decry removal plot as Kaduna Assembly trims tenor. Uh, we've seen that the local governments now are having like a three-year tenure instead of the four that it started with. And if the Kaduna State Government or uh, Assembly is trimming uh, that, those three years, I, don't, I wonder what, how many years they will have now, maybe two years and all that. Why does the state have so much power over the supposedly independent uh, local government, uh, local government? Nyangu, let me say clearly that until we begin to think about how to make Nigeria work, uh, the local government will continue to suffer, and the third tier of government will lose its life and essence. You know, naturally and across the world, every federation, every federalism uh, devolves power from top to, bo top to bottom and vice versa. Particularly with respect to revenue, uh, it comes from the bottom top, you know. But unfortunately, where you run a unitary system and call it a federalism, where you run a pseudo-federalism, uh, state governments will continue to stifle and uh, cause uh, the local governments to atrophy. Uh, but what we must do, and that is why so many of us are calling for devolution of power through fiscal federalism, and um, and restructuring of the Nigerian enterprise. If you were to have what we had in the First Republic, where wealth comes from bottom top, where the uh, federating units are the ones who contribute for the running of the center, you find out that the local governments will be relevant. And you find out that development will start from bottom top. You find out that uh, those who control the resources will be held responsible for what they do. But unfortunately, you know, like you noted, the state governments are beginning to stifle and and squeeze life out of local governments because, as it were, uh, our pseudo-federalism makes the federal government an almighty uh, arm, and then the state governments are but beggarly appendages of the center every month, and they go to Abuja for federal allocation. Mm. And the local government is at the mercy of both the state government and the federal government. But until the right thing is done, our search for development will be like the wait for Godot. Until the right thing is done, uh, the local governments will continue to suffer. I, I think that the time has come for the National Assembly, for those who superintend our political uh, amphitheater, to, to think about how truly our call for development will begin from right. the local governments, where health care, where primary and secondary education should devolve to the local governments, where uh, interstate, interlocal governments roads, where roads at the rural level and roads at the local government level are managed by the local governments, where resources come from the local government. Whatever wealth you have, you yeah. pay... Uh, to the, to the state government, 50%, and for the running of local government and state government, 30% to uh, uh, the federal government, and 20% to a dedicated pool. Until that is done, our search for development, for growth, for prosperity will be distant. Mm. Mm. That's sad. Okay. All right. Well, this is where we have to wrap it up here. Um, we want to say thank you for joining us. We apologize once again, and we just want to say thank you for sharing your valuable contributions. Thank you so much. The pleasure is my room. I'm good. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. God bless you God too. Bless you. All right, we've been speaking with Professor Chris Mustafa Wankobia. He's the convener, Country First Movement, and we've just been taking headlines, um, making um, stories rather, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.